If you really, really want to have an impact on the health of your population, one-to-one -one interaction is good enough, but you really have to have an understanding of what happens from a population perspective. And then apply that to your clinical practice. That gives you much more leeway in terms of success. Every physician, every clinician needs to focus on population health because you cannot just look at the patient in front of you. That patient in front of you is coming from a family, is coming from a home, is coming from a job, is coming from a community and a region. And all of these things have influences on their health. So you cannot just treat that patient and their particular problem. You need to think about the wider determinants of health, the wider things that also affect their health care. These are private health sector executives, you know, running hospitals. Most of the time they focus on their hospitals without looking beyond the hospital to see the things happen within the population that is actually affecting their own practice. So it, it would be better for them to think globally, just beyond uh, their own practice. Population health care is actually a fantastic model for me because it just gives a picture of what's exactly is happening with healthcare in Nigeria. Because in Nigeria, really, we really don't have enough data. We just, it shows the ripple effect of what the practice is all about. Because it's come around telling you about data, telling you about what is going on exactly, comparing what Nigerian data is with what we have overseas and every other place with the interventions and things that, uh, that are happening. Telling us how the population is important to physicians. You just, is beyond the person you're seeing right in front of you treating. You have to look backwards at, okay, if this person comes out of my clinic with this particular disease, will it cause an epidemic? Will it cause more issue? So we'll have to, what do I need to do specifically to contain what I'm seeing right there? So it's really, it shows what healthcare is at the, at the, at the nationwide level, at a country level, telling me that it's just beyond the consultation room. I'm part of the population. My family members are part of the population we are talking about. But here we are emphasizing how we are going to improve the health of the populace. And the medical practitioner is an integral part of what we are talking about. Because as private healthcare practitioners, we are one of the first port of call. Um, part of calls for the patients. They come to us and of course we have to see these patients more than that patient we are seeing. We have to see the family, we have to see them from where they are coming from, I mean the family, and we, in essence we have to be a family-centered medical pra practitioner, a patient-centered medical practitioner. So we look at the patient holistically. I think that, you know, if you were to just look at your individual patient sitting in front of you, then you will only appreciate that patient and that condition in that particular time. The role of population health gives you a strategic overview of disease in a population and therefore it allows you to have impact on a greater scale. Uh, it allows you to plan. It allows you to finance your healthcare provision to suit your population. So all of those understandings are really important. It allows you to collect data, it allows you to evaluate how well your health care provision is happening within your facility. So it's a very, very crucial part of leadership. This whole training has been an eye-opener. Let me give you an example. Um, we've been collecting data in the, um, in the facility for years. We submit data to HEFAMA and all those monitoring um, organizations. But like I said, I have this thing about that I look at figures and I just get harassed. But for the first time, I went back to the facility and I told my matron, she's the one in charge of collating the data. And I said, look, I want my own copy of what we have been submitting. 
Okay, when I said from last year, she was like, ah, doctor, I said, okay, let's do the last six months. Now, with the last six months, um, I can now say, okay, look, why don't you let us do the previous six months? Because what she did was this last six months till all, um, October ending. So now, it is now I'm seeing that I too, the, 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 the data is not just for collecting and submitting, it's actually for our use as well to see how well are we doing, in what areas can we improve our performance, and how can we improve quality, and, and it, it has just been an eye-opener for me. I mean, I don't know why I didn't see it before, but with this training, it has made a lot of difference, and now I know what I can go and do. It's been quite a journey, it's been quite a wonderful journey. Um, we've learned so much about population health, how to deal with problems as they arise, you know, interventions and all that. These are popular things in the public uh, health realm, and uh, I mean, it's been quite uh, educative and informative. So we hope to see that they will go back to their hospitals because most of them work in hospitals, and not just think about the patients in front of them, not just consider those that are sick that work, walk into their clinics or hospitals, but actually focus on the communities that they serve, all those that live in those communities that have whatever health problems, uh, or even if they don't have health problems and are well, on how to keep them well. So look at, look at, look at the, their work, not just in serving the patient, but in serving populations. I also want them to be more comfortable with data to be able to challenge and interrogate data, to collect data. When someone says to them, oh, there are more cases of measles now in Lagos than before, or there are more cases of cancer in Nigeria than before, that they have the skills to be able to say, is that really true? Where is this data coming from? What does it mean? And that's what I'm hoping. And of course, the ultimate aim is to improve the health of Nigerians. We expect also that they will continue to network with one another and they will avail themselves of further opportunities to improve on their capacity, their competence, and then engage especially with the local government, the state ministry of health, the other people within managed care, and they'll begin to identify themselves as advocates, as people who can begin to work, tap into the opportunities that, the, for example, the signing of the, of the health bill, how can they tap into that and make sure that it begins to be more um, responsive to their needs as practitioners and then to the needs of their, their patients as, as beneficiaries. So we expect that they will engage and they will engage both within the health system and outside of the health system on the things that impact on the health of population. Well, I'm hoping that with every kind of learning environment, you generate a network of people. And I'm hoping that the leaders that we generate from this program will be inspired to impact their societies, impact their communities. They may come together to impact whole populations. And in doing that, they may, you may see some significant changes because they have been selected out to do this. And I'm hoping that the program grows and continues to serve that purpose. Yes. Care Leadership Academy has actually impacted greatly on me as a person. I have become a better person. I consider myself as a leader, affirmed, confirmed, and a quality champion. And uh, we are ready to take healthcare to a new level in this country. Actually, to me, it's a very innovative idea. Uh, because one, I believe that learning for anybody, for that matter, it's no longer an option, it's a necessity. There are too many things to learn these days. And to have an academy uh, like this that can gather leaders in the private sector of our healthcare system to mentor them, to really act as leaders within their areas of influence, I think that um, it's something that is really going to change the way healthcare is delivered in Nigeria. I think we're on the path to creating an incredible cohort of leaders in the health sector. These are the people that will, in the, over the, it will not take up to five years, but in the next few years, we will see them begin to take responsibility um, for their populations, for the work they do, for the clinics, begin to offer a service that's so radically different from the way health services are provided now, and really start the transformation in our health sector that we all seek and begin to be the change that we seek to build a better Nigeria. I would hope that HLA sees itself not just existing in five years' time, but having evolved even further. 
perhaps even looking beyond the private sector. We do know that that's, that is the big issue for us now. But perhaps it's time, by that time, five years ago, time, they also think of how they might impact. They would have demonstrated their success with the private sector, that it would just be a matter of time to incorporate the public sector as well. As CHLA addressing the issues in the private health sector um, through physicians, I see HLA expanding and going into innovative opportunities with not just health um, medical doctors, but also with other members of the health team. I see HLA working both in the private and in the public sector. I see HLA really closing the gaps in the healthcare system and ensuring that from national to state to local government to community level, whatever gaps are identified are closed and we begin to see the evidence of this in the impact on populations, the impact on our indices in maternal health, in child health, in newborn health, impact on the health of men and women, on the health of adolescents. So there's so much that we can be doing and that we should be doing, and this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm.